Hello, you are watching The Garden Corner Show and as you know, we are crazy passionate about everything gardening. We're very, very real though. I am j Dog John Karstrom. I'm out here with Mr. Dave. Today, I'm going to go over some very, very technical, I know you know this already, but we're going to go over some technical um, aspects of planting. So I just want to make sure we go over the details, lest there's something that we might be missing. I'm all about extreme success in the garden. So if you get a plant, you bring it home, you're planting it, you really want it to get the maximum benefit from it. So by taking the time to, to plant it right, I think you're going to find that you really get a good enjoyment out of your plant. So a good bang for your buck, in other words. Anyway, um, so let's go over it. Now, you bought in a shrub. Now, this works for perennials too, by the way. So you bought in a shrub. I have a, a red edge Hebe, by the way, and I just want to show you step by step. Big thing number one is finding out sun or shade. And on a red edge Hebe, this definitely likes the sun. If you take a if you take a sun plant and put it in the deep shade, you're going to find that it starts to lose leaves. So sun, I consider that morning sun. I consider that afternoon sun. The rest pretty much shade. So especially if it's afternoon shade, consider that shade. So. Um, Red Edge Hebe, decide whether it's sun or shade. This is technically a shady area, uh, believe, uh, I mean, a sunny area, believe it or not. So, what we did is we've, we've gotten this in a official gallon container. If you measure a gallon container, let me do that for you, it's generally six to seven inches tall, and it's generally about six or seven inches wide really six inches. So what we want to do is dig the hole just as deep as this container. You don't have to go any deeper, but we do want to go at least two, more like three times as wide. So if this is six inch, uh, seven inches tall, seven times three is 21 inches. So, excuse me, I've got some old kiwi here. So, uh, at least we want to go is 21 inches. So you kind of get an idea of how wide you want to make this, how wide you want to make this hole. So here we have it, we connect the dots or something like that. So now, some folks want to go right in and just do kind of this type of hole. And what happens is you can certainly stick in your container and it fits right in. But what it doesn't what doesn't happen is that when you well, let me let me do it a little bit more. What happens is while it will do okay, what it, you don't get is that lateral root growth. That's what really keeps your plants healthy and can, it allows your plants to handle that stressful time during the winter or during the hot summer. So we're going to keep that in mind, uh, we're going to keep that size in mind and we're going to go even wider. So now you notice I've gotten the soil off to the side. Of course I have some very, very rich soil here. And the reason why I have this rich soil is because um, I built it up over the years. We're going to go over planting annuals and uh, planting annuals here uh, shortly, and I'll show you how we did that. So let me dig the hole here. Okay. I've got some roots here. And also, if you have rocks, in your garden, it is good to dig those out as well. If you have to pick, use a pick in your garden, use a pick. It's better to clear that hole nicely uh, for your plant to grow than just to uh, plant it over, the, over any kind of gravel or rocks. So, by the way, a shovel is roughly a foot deep. So. I just wanted to double check that just to make sure. Yeah, just 11 inches deep, so we're just right there. So, now I've gotten this. Let's just double check, make sure. 
And I'm just being very, very technical. This is really 19 inches, so I'm going to go a little bit wider, believe it or not. I really want this plant to, really want this plant to, to do well. Now, do I have to do this? Well, you don't have to do anything, but all I'm really wanting to do is have extreme success. So, now we're, I think now we're at 21 inches minimum. Yes, we are. 21 there. And 21 here, just to make sure. Well, it's a little bit wider, even more. I'm sorry. So, now you notice that is a really nice hole. You put this in here, this Hebe has a lot of room to go. Now the question is, do I use amendments with it? Most of the studies show that if you mix it 50-50 with your native soil, you will get a better rooting in. And what happens is that so I'm going to mix half this bag with it, 50-50. What happens is the roots will reach that, the edge of the native soil in your hole. And if you have it 50-50 mix, it really works out much better. And then when it reaches that native soil, it can root in, uh, it can root in better that way. So we're, mi we're going to mix this up 50-50. I'm going to add some garden in bloom. Again, I want to make sure all essential nutrients are available. Garden and Bloom has that mycorrhizae, so I want to make sure at least it gets into the root zone. So I'm adding a little bit there uh, to the backfill as well. Doesn't really matter whether you put in a, a perennial, uh, all stream areas, uh, or a type of shrub or ground cover. Same principles apply. So we're going to now, I'm just a little bit too deep here, so I'm going to go add a little bit. Now, should I mess with the roots? Generally, I don't. I'll set it right in there and then backfill right in with it. Now, some folks will say, well, if you cut into the roots um, an inch around, that allows that will that will break that root ball up and encourage that root growth as well. Yes, you may. So nothing wrong with that at all. Now, one thing to, to realize is you have to make sure that the, the shrub or perennial is at the ground level when you're all said and done. So you're gonna add it like that and you want to tamp it down some just to make sure the air pockets are out. Now we're going to water this in as well. One big thing about this is now your water direction. If this is on a hill, your water is just going to run past. Hopefully with this large hole and that mixture of amendment, that water will run past and run right into the root zone. Lest it doesn't or lest you don't get enough Unless you don't get enough water there, you might have to build a slight dam to hold the water in. Again, this is just if you um, have that hillside that you need to keep water to it. So just an idea. Now, big important thing, let me grab it real quick, is the watering. You really want to encourage that root growth uh, you want to encourage that root growth, so you want a nice deep watering. Generally, not to worry about overwatering. If your ground does not soak up, you can. And how you'll notice that is if you leave that water, if it doesn't disappear within a few minutes, then we've got we've got a waterlogged area, but you'll notice that it's just starting to seep down in there. If you keep a hose on this for one full minute, that's about five gallons of water. So that might help, help you measure how much water to water that in. Anyway, that is the show for the day. That's just about, that's just, that's the show for the day. That's a little bit of technical, technical detail about planting. 
Hope that helps because I'm very big on success in the garden. Here's your quote for the day. Happiness is not achieved by the conscious pursuit of happiness. It is generally the byproduct of other activities. Thank you, Aldous Huxley. That's the show for the day. Always live your passion. See?